joining you from the Amazon offices in Munich, and I'm very pleased to be here. Let's take a look. First and for all, what's the environment in which we work with AI? So I'm presenting my own scope of work here. And what we're trying to do with my team on a daily basis is make Amazon more frugal in a durable way. We are trying to provide concise, in-depth insights in performance to our operational leadership. And we try to be the front office finance partner for operations, meaning we link between all uh, very advanced finance functions, like there could be tax or capex functions or uh, cash treasury, all these ex expert functions and their link to the operational team, they go through the partner team that I'm leading. We obviously, as, as our main added value benefit, we try to be the catalyst for continuous improvement, looking for opportunities on a continuous basis to find that durable frugality. Now, when it looks, when we look at people, we are working with small teams. Small teams meaning we have around 70, 74 people to partner with over 2,000 leaders within the continental Europe uh, Amazon atmosphere. And we need to therefore be autonomous in decision making also for very junior resources and be able to ramp up fast to, to full professionalism. We need a high degree of backbone because very often we have more senior stakeholders in the room and we need to hold our own. And finance team needs a width of experience because we have very different diverse subjects in which we are included. Now on the next slide, we will see on how we connect this with AI, how we get some help from AI to bring these things forward. Now, first and for all, a disclaimer, uh, besides being bad at, um, at, at PowerPoint, but that has been fixed by the FPNA Trends team. Uh, I also have a disclaimer. I'm not an AI professional, nor am I a guru in AI, nor am I the Amazon spokesperson on it. However, within my team, we do use AI as in different functions, and most often I would call it co-intelligence. I steal this term from the book from Ethan Mollick, which I very much uh, appreciate to have read recently. Now, co-intelligence, the first example we run into is in an organization, a large organization as ours, there's vast amounts of information being produced. There's vast understanding of all the different things that can affect our operations, that can affect our business. And these things are written down in documents, in emails, and so on. However, being spread out on over 300 warehouses worldwide with numerous engineering teams, numerous HR teams, numerous finance teams to get access to all this information. We have built a chat ops that has access to all this information. And when we run into situations where we want to understand what has happened, what we, when we want to also make maybe proposals on how to do better, we have this chat ops based on our own privately owned company information, which we can say, what happens if our sorter in this type of warehouse runs into this type of technical trouble? What is, what is the main, main consequence? How can we solve that? And so on. Now, you, one would first expect that this has engineering purposes, but we've seen very rapidly that the finance team has been able to use it also to bridge subjects and to really have insight in our performance. The second one, much more traditional, is sales volume forecasting. Since a number of years, Amazon works with machine learning, and every time we've compared it to bottom-up human planning, we've actually had machine learning beating uh, the humans to the game. So we are using very much uh, the machine learning artificial intelligence in this field. When we then see as, as a, a last and more traditional use or also traditional uses with the vast amounts of data available with the large documents available, we very much can use AI to summarize documents, to ask for what are the main topics in this document and then use this 
uh, in order to further use the information in a rapid way. So these are three very, let's say, quite simple uses, but that enhance our efficiency greatly. If we look at the next thing, where to use with care, sorry, one page too far there, where to use with care. This, this is where I'm currently still very, let's say, reticent with AI. And I know that AI is on a daily basis becoming uh, more professional and these things will solve in due time. But right now, we tend not to use AI for writing because very often we end up with a lot of adjectives and fluffy material, which I think is not correlating with the purposes of a finance department. Sensitive areas as well, anything significantly important in legal, ethical or reputational implications, I would not use AI. Uh, there, there's no inbuilt ethics built into an AI for now. So uh, I'm very reticent there. And then very specialized data specific tasks. We tend to have some trouble to even this morning. I tried again to get correctly out of AI, the Bavarian bank holidays for 2025 and AI still has trouble to have the exact correct list, which actually Google provides easily. So how to build, how to deal with AI to, in order to have it under control. First and for all, with my team, we make AI use explicit. When we use it, we tell in the document that we've used it. The, se the second thing is we make the responsibility explicit as well. Uh, meaning the, any text produced, it's not the responsibility of AI, but it's the responsibility of the person built the text that made the prompt engineering towards the AI and then that pasted that in a document. And then the last thing, be very intentional with training and experience sharing. So we have had very uh, several prompt engineering opportunities uh, in, in, in Amazon where we've asked our team to join those. We are showing them examples of where we have used AI in, in a possible way forward. So we, we are not, not talking about it. We very much put it on the table as a subject instead of hiding it. So in summary, where do we go with AI and business partnering? First and for all, where, where the business partnering and the human stay of very big importance is to really see oppor opportunities. I, I live in, in a finance that's mainly focused on reducing cost and chasing frugality. Seeing waste is still much easier with the eyes than without with any other kind of data tool. So a, a recent example was by visiting a, a warehouse, we saw that we were using the wrong type of safety gloves. Not only were they not as safe as they could be, but secondly, they were also more expensive. The, this was only noticeable if you walked the work floor and that cannot be replaced by any type of tool. Secondly, the human insight to see past KPIs. So, very often when we have the in the context of of a, of a large supply chain where we are having different kpis in different departments and so on where we see that the kpis don't give us the entire value chain context that is very often brought forward by humans and still missed uh, by the machine once more then a third um, we have the very complex issues how much wage increases are we going to give our our, our colleagues in the next year in France, how much uh, do we need any kind of absenteeism bonuses, any kind of such very complex subjects, these type of things you will do by the knowledge of humans that will research the subject that will take different sources and so on. You can get ideas from AI, but you will never let the decision be made over there. And then, one thing to call out for the risky use to obtain personal efficiency. We've seen it in the past very often people to rapidly produce a text. They put it in AI. It can lead to suboptimal work. Uh, we've seen that sometimes AI uh, doesn't know the difference really between causality and correlation. Now humans don't always know it either, but still 
uh, we are very careful with that to to create texts with it and then the i would say where we should be most careful is we need to make our messages concise and with added value i put a snippet of adam grant here a professor at wharton where he says we are going in this age of information uh, overload and that is pattern recognition the ability to synthesize I think that reflects very much on our work in, in finance. I hope you have uh, gotten something from this introduction on how we work in Amazon operations with AI. Thank you very well. Well,